Have you ever felt like a complete failure as a parent? In November 2015, I sat in the quiet of our once chaotic home and wondered where I'd gone wrong. The conflict with our teenage daughter, Grace, had escalated to the point that she had moved out and was living with another family. Our oldest children, John and Kayla, had packed all of their worldly belongings into suitcases and enrolled in Job Corps. This was their ticket out of our house before they even turned 18, and they didn't have any plans of returning. Despite my best efforts to be a good mom, I felt like our family was falling apart. I oscillated between feeling fear over their futures and being too tired to even care at all. Here's the crazy thing. Just three short years earlier, John, Kayla, and Grace had joined our family from Ethiopia through adoption. They were so excited to finally have parents. I know, I can feel it. You're thinking, Ugh. what kind of mother is so ill that even kids who are so desperate for a family don't want to stick around? I promise. I started out as a fun mom. We started our family with two kids by birth, PJ and Mia. And we were always on adventures to the science center, the zoo, the train museum, playgrounds. As a parent, I set clear and consistent boundaries. And when they misbehaved, we did things like take away privileges and send them to timeout. Behavior modification became my definition of successful parenting. And then Ty. He was born in Korea and joined our family at two and a half. And he was the kind of kid those backpack leashes were made for. I know, I've judged parents for using such contraptions. But Ty was always on the move, and he was fast. And I didn't know how else to keep him safe while still managing two other young children. I quickly regretted any judgmental thought I had ever had towards another parent. With him, it didn't matter what tone of voice I used, what I threatened to take away, I was powerless. After a few years of sliding into a hole of shame and despair, we did find some, a different way to look at behaviors. We learned to look for the need behind the behavior. We learned that Ty was a sensory seeker. He wasn't just hyper. And he needed our support to help him deal with his big emotions, not just be sent to time out to figure it out on his own. But despite these differences in how we were parenting, I still felt responsible for my kids' behaviors. Because if challenging behaviors are due to unmet needs, then it must be my job as the parent to meet all the needs. A couple years after Ty joined our family, we added John, Kayla, and Grace, bringing our grand total up to six kids. Now this might surprise you, but parenting six kids is a little bit different than parenting just two. So I quickly gave in my fun mom persona for controlling mom. I micromanaged everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. I managed food choices, friend choices, clothing choices, music choices. I even had a log of how many screen time minutes versus exercise minutes everyone was getting. And when I talked to other parents, they seemed to be managing similar things. And even the dentist was always asking me if everyone was brushing twice and flossing daily. So I felt justified in what I was doing. But micromanaging got me nowhere, except further away from the mom I wanted to be. Every day wore on like a battle. Parenting was not fun anymore. And my worst parenting nightmares were coming true. After the older kids moved out, I sat with my therapist, and she said, what now? The older kids are gone. You could be done with them. Or would you like to explore what it would look like to pursue them for a future relationship? So I paused. I kind of wanted to be done. <laughs> I had underestimated how much energy it takes to manage so many kids. But another voice whispered, you cannot abandon them. As an adoptee, I know what it means to be fought for, to be wanted. And I knew I would never forgive myself if I was the one to walk away. So I looked, hopefully, at my therapist, and I asked, so what do I need to do to fix what I've broken? 
You might not have as many kids as us, and maybe adoption is not part of your story. But I'm betting there are days, if you're a parent, that you still fa feel like a failure because of your kids' behaviors. I was at a parent workshop one day, and we did an exercise that changed everything. The facilitator had us get out a sheet of paper and divide it into thirds. In the first column, we were to write down things we had control over. In the second column, things we had influence over. And in the third column, things we didn't have any control over. And to my chagrin, I realized the only thing I actually have control over is me. And certainly not my kids' behaviors. As a parent coach, the first thing I have parents do is get a working definition of success. And I have one rule. It has to be something they have 100% control over. Because even if you do everything right, your kids still make their own decisions, and you might not like them. With our kids who had walked away, my therapist helped me realize that my definition of success could not be me, or them, coming back to have a relationship. Success became my actions, sending notes, texts, care packages, even when my feelings were hurt from being rejected again and again and again. So what if we all defined successful parenting in a different way? In their newest book, The Power of Showing Up, well-known child experts, Drs. Tina Bryson and Dan Siegel, define successful parenting as our ability to respond to our kids in a way where they feel safe, seen, soothed, and secure. Basically, we just need to keep showing up. We can't control our kids' behaviors, but we can control ourselves. I'm happy to report that eventually we were able to repair those relationships with John, Kayla, and Grace. But along the way, my defining success as what I could control helped me separate my feelings of worth from whatever the eventual outcome was. So what if you redefined successful parenting by your actions rather than your kids' behaviors or even their accomplishments? What if you gave yourself credit for showing up in a way where they felt safe, seen, soothed, and secure, rather than berating yourself every time they didn't meet your expectations? In our parent groups at the Adoption Connection, Wednesday is our favorite day because it's when we celebrate Wednesday wins. And when parents have had a tough week with their kids, they're tempted to report to me that there are no wins to be found. But here's the thing, Wednesday wins are not actually about kids' behaviors. They're about, you might have guessed it, what the parents have done well that week. Maybe they took some time to drink their coffee hot. Maybe they made their own therapy appointment. Maybe they kept their cool during a massive meltdown. When parents retrain their brains to think about success and wins in this way, it radically changes their families. You see, when you ultimately realize you don't control your kids' behaviors, you can stop wasting all this energy on trying to micromanage what you can't control. Use that extra margin you get back to have more fun. Be the kind of parent that your kids want to keep hanging out with even when they don't have to anymore. This parenting journey is crazy and stressful and should not be done alone. So I encourage you to invite some friends along for the ride or join a local or virtual parent support group. I promise you, celebrating Wednesday wins is way more fun with friends. And if no one has told you lately, remember, you are a good parent, and you're doing good work. Thank you.